All right, let's start with a circle. Now let's track the height as we move a point around this circle. This produces the sine function. Allowing the radius of the circle to vary causes a vertical stretch to the curve produced. We'll set the radius as 2023, the value from the question, and remove the rest of the diagram, leaving only the sine curve. Now let's zoom in to see how the floor function affects the curve. Sine is a continuous function, but the floor function changes that. Instead of being a smooth curve, we have a series of horizontal sections looking kind of like a staircase. Our goal then is to find the area under this staircase. However, there's one important fact we need to remember. When we're integrating a function, any area under the x-axis will produce a negative result. So when the point is below its starting point, which occurs after it's completed half of its journey, the integral is going to produce a negative value. We'll mark the positive area in green and the negative area in red. So our goal then is to find the difference in size of these areas. We can make this even easier by using a little trick gifted to us by the symmetry of the circle. Instead of tracking one point moving all the way around the circle, let's track two points moving halfway each. This leaves us with a lovely symmetric shape, but one that will lose its symmetry after the floor function is applied. But all is not lost. The overall result of this symmetry is that each stair in the staircase has the same width as its corresponding stair in the opposing staircase. However, the height of the stairs are not equal. The floor function resulted in the lower curve being one unit further away from the x-axis. So if we add the areas together, which can be visualised by pushing them together and removing any overlaps, we're left with a single red rectangle, with a height of 1, how much further from the x-axis the lower curve was than the upper curve, and a width given by the angle each point moved through, which is pi, one half of a full turn. Thus, the answer is negative pi, negative as the arrow is beneath the x-axis.